All right, welcome to class. So today we're going to talk a little bit about something called density and see how the density of a material is an example of something that can behave as a conversion factor. Okay, so let's remind ourselves really quickly what a conversion factor is. All right. So I'm going to do a quick little example here. A conversion factor is uh, something that tells us the relationship between two properties or two materials or two things and um, the material or the property or the information on the top of the fraction is the same as the information on the bottom of the fraction. So our example that we've used lots is the apple. If each apple has a certain number of seeds, then I can say that there's six seeds per single apple, right? And that's an example of a conversion factor, which can be written uh, more than one way. Whoops, one apple contains six seeds, right? So I have two conversion factors, which will be helpful in dimensional analysis. We say, all right, I have 47 apples. How many seeds am I going to be able to get? And we write ourselves an equal sign, and then we know that apples has to go down here. So we write apples down here, and then we look for a conversion factor. It looks like this one will work. Seeds up here. We remember there's six seeds for every apple. And so we see that to find out how many seeds there are, when we're given a number of apples is to take the number of apples and multiply it by the number of seeds. Okay, so these are the conversion factors and this is what we call dimensional analysis or unit analysis. We're analyzing the units or the dimensions, which is another fancy word for kind of the units. So with that in mind, we're going to introduce this concept, this concept, but the property of density. Density. Density is um, the property of a material that relates to its uh, how much mass there is uh, of a specific material in a given volume. In a given volume. So we've talked about mass before. We've said, for example, here's a, a pile of material on a plate. Here's a pile of the same material on a plate. We know that the mass of this one over here will be more than the mass of that one over there, right? We've also talked about volume before. We know that the volume of this material, the space that it takes up, now that's not the mass, that's different, right? The space that it takes up here will be more, it'll take up more space than that space over there. Usually volume is related to uh, how much liquid you have, but it doesn't matter. Volume is also taken up by material. So if I have this much uh, liquid here, and here I have only a small amount of liquid, then it is showing us that I have uh, a more volume here and less volume there, right? Now density is taking into account the mass and the volume of material by dividing the mass by the volume. So the density equals the mass of the material divided by the volume of the material. And typically for now, the units that we use for mass when we're thinking about density are grams and the units that we use when we're thinking about volume are milliliter. Grams are units of mass and milliliters are units of volume. So when I think about let's say two materials, here's one material, all right, we'll call it material A, and here is a second material, it's material B. We could say here, material A has more volume 
than material B because it, it's bigger. But I can't tell which one has more mass. If these were both the same thing, then you could say, oh wait, this one has more mass because I can see it's bigger. But now that they're different materials, this one might just be a heavier type of material, like, like lead has a greater density than something like um, water, or if this was just a, a handful of, of flour or something, right? So the density is this property. It's the mass for every given unit of volume, all right? So even though right now this has a greater volume, we could find that that has a greater density. So let's give this a volume. Let's say this volume is four milliliters. And let's say this volume over here is uh, three milliliters, okay? This has a greater volume than B does. But then if we take the mass, let's say the mass of this is uh, 4.2, grams, and the mass of this material over here is 2.7 grams, 2.7 grams. Well, we can find the density of this material here and this material here and find out which one is more dense by taking the mass of the material and dividing it by the volume. So if I take 4.2 divided by 4, right, put that into my calculator, I get 1.05. And the units there, because this was 4.2 grams and 4 milliliters, the units are grams per milliliter. Or in other words, 1.05 grams for every 1 milliliter. That's the density of this material. The density of A is 1.05 grams for every one milliliter. All right. Can you help me find the density of B with your calculator? What is the density of B? 2.7 divided by 3 equals 0.9. 0 0.9. Now, what are the units? Grams per every one liter. Very good. One grams for every one milliliter. Right? Grams per milliliter. Excellent. So, which of these materials has a greater density? A. A has a greater density. That's right. Good job. Another way that you can calculate density is by, for example, if I have a, a, a container of water here, all right, and I know the volume of this water is at 10.2 milliliters, and then I have this material, this is material C, let's say. I can put it on the scale, if I put it onto a scale and find out its mass, I can find that it weighs 12.143 grams. But it's hard to find the volume of that material, right? If it was a nice, perfect cube or something like that, I could take the height times the width, times the depth, right, x, y, and z here, right, that's how you find the volume of something. And then I could uh, find its, its volume, that would be something you could do. But when it's all weird shaped like that, it's hard to find the volume of it. But there's a little trick we can do. We can take this c, and put it into this container of liquid. So if I took this C here and put it into that container of liquid, now the liquid 
is going to raise. It's going to raise because this takes up space and the liquid has to move out of the way. And let's say it goes up to uh, 27.35 milliliters. Now, whoops, let's get, put this to zero milliliters. Now, um, that information there can tell me how much volume that material took up. Do you know how I can determine how much volume that material took up by looking at these numbers? 27.35 minus 10.20. That's right. And that answer is 17.15 milliliters. 17.15 milliliters. So now I know the volume of that material. I know the mass and I know the volume. So now what can I find? Um, you do 12.14 divided by 17. 12.143, that's right, divided by 17.15. And what is that going to give me? What do you call that? Uh, the density. The density, right? Okay, very good. Did you get it? No, still working on it. Say that again. Still working on it. Okay, great. Um, how many significant digits? One, two, three, four, five. Is it five significant digits or four? Just four, because seventeen point one five only has four. Um, so what'd you get? Seven point seven zero eight zero. Ah, very good. Excellent. Density of C is that, and the units are grams per milliliter. Very good. Excellent job. All right. So here's another one for you. Let's see if you can figure out the density of this glass bead. On the calculator? Glass bead with a mass of 5.96 is dropped into a beaker of water containing 10.10 .10 milliliters. If the resulting volume is 12.3 milliliters, what's the density of the bead? Um, it has three significant digits. Good. Three significant digits. It's two, eight. 2.8 grams. 2.8? Yeah. Very good. 2.8 grams per milliliter. Now let's look at significant digits for a second, okay? Let's see, because look, this answer only had two significant digits. It might be wrong, but let's double check. So 5.96 grams divided by, what volume did you divide by? Uh, two. Point 0.1. So we had 12.3 minus 10.2, and that was 2.1, you said? Yeah. How many significant digits are in that answer? Two. Two. So because you're taking three divided by two, then the answer is going to have how many significant digits? Two. 
two. Very good. Okay. Excellent work. Now, a sample of metal X has the same mass as the sample of metal Y, but the sample of metal X has a smaller volume. Which metal, X or Y, has a greater density? Um. Let's draw a picture. I have a metal here, right? Metal X has the same mass of metal Y, but what? Does Y have a larger or smaller volume? Uh, smaller volume. No, larger. Yeah, Y has a larger volume. But they have the same what? Um, mass. Mass. So let's say that they both weigh, just for example, one gram. What's, give me a number for the volume of X. We can make up any number. Four. Four. Four milliliters. What's the volume of Y? Five. Five. Yeah, it just has to be some number larger. So, which one of these has a, a greater density? Uh, y. Y. If I take one divided by five, which is one gram divided by five milliliters, is that going to be because larger five. than one divided by four milliliters? One gram divided by four? Yeah. Why don't you put that in your calculator? Which what, what, what are the answers here? Divided by four is bigger. Hmm? One divided by four is 0.25. 0 0.25 grams per milliliter. And then 0 0.2 grams for All right. So one. what's 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 greater? The density of X or the density of Y? X. That's right. So we knew they had the same mass, because that's what it told us. But we knew Y had a greater volume. So that means that X has a greater density, a higher density, because it's the mass divided by the volume. Okay, very good. Here's another one. How does, let's see if we can get this one. Can you read it out loud for us? It's the same slide. No, it's different. It's slightly different. The same sample of metal X has the same volume as a simple sample of metal Y, but the sample of metal Y has less mass. What X or Y has a greater density? So 
So if we draw a picture, which one are we going to draw with uh, a greater volume? Uh, X. Because X has a, a larger volume? Yeah. Why don't you read it again? What's it say? Oh, they have the same volume. Same volume. So I'm going to draw two mountains that are exactly the same in terms of their volume. Okay? Now, so I'll make up a volume. I'll say the milliliters uh, is uh, one milliliter. Each one is one milliliter. Now, which one has a higher... This is X over here, and this is Y over here. Which one has a, a greater mass? Uh... X has a greater mass, so let's say two grams and just one gram. Yeah. So which one has a greater density? Um, one gram. Why? Why? What's the density of Y? One divided by one equals one. Very good. So this is one gram per milliliter. What's the density of X? Uh, well, 50, 0 0.50? No, it's two grams divided by one milliliter, right? Oh. Right, am I right or did I make a mistake? You're right. Okay, so then does that mean X has a greater density? Yeah. Okay, that's right. Good job. Way to work through that one. Mm, here's a third one. It's different too. Read through it for us. The sample of metal X has a smaller volume than a sample of metal Y, and the sample of metal Y has a greater mass then the sample of metal X, which metal X or Y has a greater density? Okay. So which one has a greater volume? Uh, y. Sample of X has a smaller volume. So here's X. And here's Y. Okay. Who has a greater mass? Uh, y. Y. Y has a greater mass. So if we put some volume numbers on here, if I said this was one milliliter and this is two milliliters, that's just, these are just examples that might not actually be the difference, but we can choose those. But if Y has a greater mass and a greater volume, we don't know how much of a greater mass it has. We don't know if it's twice as massive, why, or if it's four times. We just know it's more. So in this type of problem, we can't determine it because we don't know how much more of a mass y is than x. Because both the volume and the mass the answer is D. Y. What's that? The uh, answer is D. This cannot be determined. D. That's right. This cannot be determined. Very good. Excellent job. Now, let's use an, look at as an example of how the density can be used as a conversion factor. You can use the density as a conversion factor. And here's how. Um, in this example up here, or not this example, but this slide here, it says that uh, blood has a density of 1.05, which is 1.05 grams for every milliliter or cubic centimeter. Or, like we said before, we can write the, uh, the conversion factor with the volume on top and the mass on the bottom. Both of those are, are okay. So, here's an example. A crash sounds from the lab. A large vial of mercury has fallen 
from a broken shelf. We call the hazardous material team to report the spill. About two quarts of mercury spilled from the bottom, and they ask for the mass of mercury that's on the ground. So what is the mass of mercury on the ground? Okay. We need to solve this problem using dimensional analysis. Using dimensional analysis. Whoops. We need to solve this problem using dimensional analysis. So we need to write an equal sign. The units that we're after on the right, the units that we start with on the left, and the information provided to get the right answer. Do you want to try this for us on your uh, screen? Sure. All right. So when we're doing dimensional analysis, the first thing is to do what? Um, draw the line. That's right. Draw the line with an equal sign. Very good. And the next thing, what do we do? Um, M for mass. Very good. Well, actually, G, mass in grams. It's going to be G, grams. But that's very good. We want to know the grams of material. Excellent job. Now, what is it that we start with? You have to look back at the slide to find out what we start with, or do you know what we start with? Um, question 2.0. Um, quarts. Quarts. Good. So we can call it just Q. 2.0 Q. Good. Q. 2.0 Q. Very good. And then we know quartz goes there. Excellent job. Now we have to look back at our slide and see what we can convert quartz to. See what information they've provided for us. Um, the answer to mass is uh, HGD. Hmm? HGD. Say that again. Does quartz go into HGD? Uh, no, no. Quartz, see how it says QT over there? 1.0567 quartz is equal to one liter. Oh, one liter. One point zero five six seven quarts. One point one five six seven. One point zero five six seven quarts. Very good. And that's one liter. Very good. Now we know that the next one has what on the bottom? Liters. Very good. And what can we convert liters to? Let's look back at the slide. Uh, into milliliters? Yeah, milliliters. Very good, because we see that they convert milliliters to grams, and we want to get to grams eventually, so we can convert it to milliliters. Good. So, how much milliliters? 13. Oh, no. How many milliliters are in a liter? That's a good question. Do you remember milla? What's milla stand for? Um, is it centa? Centa stands for how many? A hundred. A hundred. So milla must be what? Ten? No, it's a thousand because there's ten millimeters for every centimeter, remember? So there's a ten milliliters for every centiliter. 
So there's a thousand milliliters for every liter. So put milliliters on top, and we have a thousand of them. A thousand milliliters for every one liter. Very good. Now we're in milliliters, and we want to convert milliliters to grams. To grams? To grams, that's right. What's the number? Um. Do we know how many grams of mercury there are in a milliliter of mercury? 13.69. Very good. 13.69 grams of mercury. 13.69. In this book? No, because it's 13.69 grams. Very good. For every milliliter. Excellent. Now, we, what do we have to do next? Anything? Nope. No, because we we're done. That's where we want it to go. We want it to get to grams. So now we just need our calculator. 2.0. Why don't you put it on the, the, on the screen so we can watch you calculate it. Over to the right a little bit and up higher. No, or just on the ground, but there you go. There you go. 2.0. Scoot over so you can see your problem, though. Just set it on the table. Can you guys see that? Yeah, that's fine. Two point zero times one thousand times thirteen point six nine, and then divided by. One point zero five six seven divided by that's it. Yeah, that's it. So get rid of that divided by sign. Equals two. 25,910.6. Okay, why don't you write that number down? 0.855. We only have two significant figures, though, right? Yeah. So it goes 2, 5, 9, 1, 0.8. Five. Okay, now the two significant figures is just going to be the two and the five, but the five needs to round up. So the answer is just going to be 26,000. So this turns into 26? Just write it up on top above it. 26,000. Zero, zero, zero. Very good. That answer, don't put a decimal point, right? very good. 26,000 tells people that the second digit is the last significant digit. And we started with 2.0 quarts, just two significant digits. So that should be the answer. Very good. Why don't you go back to the slide now and take a look and see if we got it right. Okay. Very good. So we got... 2.6 times 10 to the fourth grams. Is that what you got? Yeah. Yep. That's right. Excellent job. Way to go. Okay. Um, that's good. Now we're done for the day and we're done with chapter two. Thank you so much. Good job. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.